Hello guys, Raj here, back with another video. I am an enterprise solutions architect working at AWS. In this video, we are going to look at how Lambda works under the hood and how to optimize your code. So this is a little advanced video than usual. However, I need to uh, keep up my street cred as serverless expert. So I decided to make this video. All right, let's get into it. So uh, let's take a look at how Lambda code gets executed under the hood. So when your Lambda gets invoked for the first time, uh, a container gets spun up uh, behind the scenes and AWS manages uh, all this. And then your uh, Lambda code gets loaded and then your uh, code gets executed. Uh, so the time it takes for the container to come up and then uh, loading your code uh, is also known as cold start. It's basically the time between uh, when the function actually gets invoked uh, and uh, when the function actually starts running. Okay, so uh, let's say the Lambda is done running, uh, but even when the Lambda gets done running, uh, this container uh, still stays up for a certain time. And some codes stay warm too. Uh, so let's say that Lambda, the same Lambda gets invoked again uh, within this certain time uh, when the container is up. Uh, so the same container will get reused. And in this case, uh, some codes uh, will get executed again, right? However, warm codes uh, do not re-execute. Uh, so this saves execution time. So as you can see, since the container is reused uh, and then uh, some one codes do not uh, re-execute, uh, it saves uh, some time uh, for subsequent execution. So cold start is less on uh, subsequent execution. So you guys are probably asking, so what codes uh, stay warm? So let's take a look. Uh, so this is a typical uh, Lambda function. So you have a handler, uh, which is the actual function that needs to be executed upon invocation. And then we have an event object, uh, which is the data sent uh, to the function. And then we have the context object, uh, which has the runtime information, uh, such as request ID, log group, etc. And we mostly use this event uh, to do uh, stuff on the Lambda handler. So if we take a look at an actual uh, Lambda code, all this code which appears before this Lambda handler. Uh, so basically all this code within this uh, fancy rectangle um, gets executed during the first execution and it does not execute on the subsequent uh, Lambda executions on the same container, right? So this stuff stay warm. And any code which is uh, under or inside the Lambda handler, uh, like all these regular codes or other function calls from the Lambda handler, uh, they rerun uh, during each execution. So now that we know what code stays warm, uh, this opens up some interesting possibilities, right? Uh, so let's say you have this uh, Lambda code, uh, you are connecting to a database, right? And this code is executing uh, every time and connection to database could be a little resource intensive. Um, so in that case, move it to global scope, right? If this Lambda is a backend of an API and let's say it gets executed hundreds or thousands of time um, and, and all these executions are in close time proximity of each other so that the container that uh, spun up, uh, it gets reused over and over again uh, then after you move this connect to database in the global scope, and it will only execute once rather than really reinitializing the connection every time. So another thing to note, I intentionally put this Boto3 commands here. Uh, so generally when you are using Boto3 commands and, and initializing a client, uh, always put that on the global section, right? Uh, because uh, they generally get reused over and over. Um, so it's a good practice to keep them up top. And also I'm reading the environment variables up top as well uh, because they are going to get reused every time. So you're probably asking, why not put everything in global scope, right? Um, so I, I color coded a couple things here. So remember the cold start in the first execution? 
is the time that the container comes up and loads your code and container stays warm for a certain time. Uh, so the more code you put on global scope, cold start and fast execution will be longer, right? And container does go down if Lambda not invoke subsequently for a certain time. Uh, so it's a balance. And uh, you can use some tools to uh, look at and determine uh, what you should put, how much time it's taking and all that stuff. Uh, so I want to make sure that you guys don't uh, fall in a trap of uh, this global scope, right? Uh, so let's take an example. Uh, let's say you have this function uh, which executes the send regular offer uh, function from this handler, right? If you copy this function call to the global scope, it doesn't save anything, right? Because you are executing this on, from the Lambda handler anyway. Uh, so the only stuff you should move to uh, global scope uh, are the functions that you can execute only once and be reused uh, for the subsequent executions, like we saw, uh, database connections or Boto3 connections. Uh, if this is a regular code, and then, okay, so you put it up top, so it's gonna get executed the first time, uh, and then for even for the subsequent time, it's gonna get executed as well. So it's not gonna uh, save anything. So this is one of the anti-pattern. I just wanted to make sure you guys are not thinking along the line of uh, moving all the functions that's getting called from Lambda Handler to the global scope. All right, guys and girls, that is the video. If you like the video, smash that like button and subscribe. I will see you guys later. Peace.